Welcome to a GCN indoor training session. In this session, we're going to be taking you through some anaerobic sprint efforts on the Paso Sella. I have to say that I was never much good at sprint efforts. What about you, James? Did you ever do this kind of training? Yes, no, I did it a fair bit when it get, was getting close to those crit sessions to up my VO2 max, really. Yeah, it's pretty important for the kind of races you were doing. Yeah. And I probably should have been doing them as well. Anyway, I'm going to be training on an elite Drivo 2. Yeah, and I've gone for the Diretto. And um, it's a very short, I wouldn't say sweet session, but it's definitely time efficient. I'd say short and painful, what do you reckon? Under 30 minutes, done it and dusted, which is pretty good really for an efficient training session. I'm gonna start with a seven minute progressive warm up. So I'm gonna start out pretty easy, gradually ramp it up and maybe even include some little surges in there just to make sure you are totally ready for the first effort. Let's get stuck in. Oh, I'm out of breath already, James. I know. I would just mention, make sure you're getting your fluids on board. Yep. Not so much that you need to get off and pee. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but keep hydrated. It's yep. a short session, but it is a hard session. So yep. You will get a sweat on. Yeah, yeah. I often feel I find after indoor trainer sessions that I, I'm dehydrated for the rest of the day because I sweat so much. Yeah. And then forget to drink enough. Don't make the same mistake as me. That RPM doesn't need to be massive. Nope. But enough just to spin those legs off. Yeah, easy riding, but like I say, including some surges. Don't, make, don't want to be cruising in zone one for the whole of the warm up. If you are wearing a heart rate monitor, you might see it, or you will see it start to increase. Yep. As you get through the warm up. Yep, get your heart rate drift going on for the whole session, of course. Um, we're going to talk you through the session in terms of perceived exertion, but if you have a power meter, well, that's pretty helpful for these training sessions as well. Heart rate, you can use to assess your effort. The problem with that is, of course, that it drifts both, there's a time lag when you start an effort, and it drifts during an effort and during the whole session. So. If you're trying to hold the same heart rate at the end that you were holding at the beginning, you're going to end up riding too easy at the end and possibly too hard at the start. You are joining us in the gorgeous Alta Badia region, which is wow, just incredible yeah. to ride in, isn't it? And given that today it happens to be raining and grey and cold outside, I have to say that seeing the blue sky and the summer vegetation it's quite a nice way to escape, really. <laughs> we are on board with Chris Opie, our Chris? resident sprinter. Right. <laughs> so we watch and see how he gets on up this climb. Three minutes, just 40 to go with your warm up. Feel free to put in those bursts. All those little efforts just to make sure your legs are fully warmed up. I've got a bit of a high cadence then, Emma. Yeah, <laughs> don't have enough power, do I? Did you do these kind of efforts for a time trial or uh, so was it more the tempo efforts? Yeah, so funnily enough, warming up for time trials is probably my least favourite thing out of anything in cycling. I just, such a stressful time. It's given me a real sort of anxiety about, about warming up now and I, I just hate it. So, but yeah, I would, I think um, my warm up for time trial would include some one minute efforts over threshold to like make the time trial effort feel easy relatively really but mm. yeah progressive progressive warm up with some one minute efforts some two minute efforts but really my my time trial warm up was always pretty short because you don't want to waste the energy you need for the race that's a key thing that some people forget when they're warming up for time trials or or indeed any race so keep it short and sweet i just remember the the pressure mounting mentally for a time trial getting all kind of nervous and that that whole, oh no, is there going to be a queue for the loo before I have to start? 
<laughs> Getting in and out of a skin suit to go to the loo just for a time trial is a real pain. Anyway. Don't have to do that anymore. No. You should start feeling warm now. Yep. I can definitely feel yep. the sweat about to, to start. Yep. Heart rate definitely rising. Yep, you should be ramping up to about, about sort of five out of 10 on the effort scale. So, definitely want to be feeling it, feeling like you're working. Your legs need to be reminded that you're a cyclist. In these efforts, you can get out the saddle if you would like. I'm going to have to, yeah. But feel free also to sit in your saddle and hold that high tempo. Yep, and so you should have should have done your surges by now if you're going to do them in your warm-up. You've got less than a minute left. Now bear in mind that when it comes to a 30-second all-out sprint, you need appropriate resistance. So if you've programmed your Wahoo or your smart trainer to provide that resistance to you, then um, you just need to set off your intervals to start at the right time. If, if you're going to do it manually, you want to make sure you're in the right gear before you start the sprint, because otherwise you waste 10 seconds of your 30 second sprint uh, just in changing gear. So getting close now, so I'm going to move up to the big ring. I'll do the same. Walk and uh, now. I might not be talking much during the sprint effort, so let's just say that in terms of effort level, you want kind of 11 out of 10. It's really everything you've got for 30 seconds, flat stick, if you've got a power meter, it's about twice your FTP. Right. Five, <laughs> four, Three, two, two, one. All right, lift it now. Short, but it's hard. Fifteen seconds to go. Come on now. Eight, seven, six. Three, three, two, two. and back on. Nice job. And you've got three minutes. Spin your legs out. So get into a nice small gear. Keep spinning. Your legs should have hurt during that effort. So you want to spin the legs out. Throw out the lactate. Breathe deeply. It's a very good opportunity to practice slow breathing. I don't know how you managed to speak whilst doing that one, James. You're actually doing the right power as well. It's the first effort. <laughs> yeah, so the three minutes of recovery between your sprint efforts in this session, well, they do allow for total recovery of your cardiovascular system, but your legs will get more tired. So, it might be too late to say this, but you should try and avoid overkilling it in the very first sprint effort. I can't because I'm such a diesel that I can barely get to one and a half times my FTP, let alone twice. But basically, you want to still be trying to put out the same power in your final sprint effort as you did in the first one. Now in total we'll be doing, we'll be doing five of those 30 second efforts. Half your recovery done. Should be starting to feel human again. Nearly a minute to go till the next effort. Start thinking about it. Start thinking wisely about what gear you choose, yep. if you need to. Start thinking about what you might do differently compared to the previous effort. If you started in too smaller gear or too higher gear, I started in too bigger gear. Yeah, I, I can see you jump out of the saddle. <laughs> yeah. But feel free to do that if you yep. want to get out of the saddle, good to get on top of the gear. And then for the last 15 seconds, you can sit back in the saddle just to hold on for the longevity of the, of the effort. The 
moment we're about level two out of 10 in terms of effort. I'm spinning along at about half my FTP. Right, coming up to it now. We've got 15 seconds to go. Big ring. Get on top of the gear. You want to hit it hard right from the go. This is second, 30 second effort out of five. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Hold it, hold it. 10 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one. Woo! Oh, Definitely fell out. Mate, one. I'm glad you're talking. <laughs> well, another three minutes to recover now. You might want to wipe your face. Good moment to catch a drink. If, uh, even if you don't feel thirsty, just a little sip. Don't drink half the bottle. This is the kind of session where you might end up bringing it back up again. <laughs> This is a really good workout. If you're just getting in from work, and before you sit down and relax, to jump straight on the bike. So then you don't, your, you don't let your body just totally chill out. Yeah. It is pretty intense for 30 seconds, but it's only five of them. It's only actually two and a half minutes of hard work in total. Very efficient time-wise. Done and dusted, like I said, 26 minutes in total. That probably makes it half an hour, including setting up your turbo trainer and uh, yeah it's really important I mean even if it's the winter you might think well winter's the time for base miles but it's quite important to keep your your uh, fast twitch muscles activated keep the other energy systems working too occasionally otherwise you end up coming out of the winter into the spring feeling a bit sluggish so don't want to overcook it in winter but it is important to include efforts like this so that yeah you don't feel like a hibernating bear when you come out in the spring that's how I feel all the time, to be fair. <laughs> right. Now you should be start thinking about the next effort now. Comes on fast. It does indeed. I'm going to try and keep my cadence a bit higher for the next one. Easier said than done. For some reason my legs are not cooperating today, but then I've never been a sprinter. No, but you do feel at home going up this one, don't you? I do, it's huh. taking me right back, it's beautiful, yeah. Reminds me of the Maratona, actually. So, yeah, so Chris's RPM here was, his cadence was pretty low because he was pedaling super easy uphill. And of course, if you're going slowly up a hill, well, you don't go very fast. If you have the wrong gears, you go pretty slow cadence. Right, 30 seconds to go. Find a big ring if you're changing gear. Obviously, if your trainer will do it for you, then Makes life a whole lot easier. If you want to change up positions, so get in the drops. Oh, that's a good idea. Can think of that. You can. Really make it feel like that sprint effort. 10 seconds now. Right. I'll count us in, you can count us out. How's that? <laughs> Three, two, one, and you're off. Hoppa. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and relax. Oh. Woo. Three minutes recovery. Oh. And uh, good news is you're now well over halfway. In fact, you're 60% of the way through. I'm beginning to wonder, James. Maybe I should have done more sessions like this, given how crap I was at attacking and sprinting. Yeah. Too late to change it now, but. I mean, Emma, I think you did pretty well in your career. Yeah. So. <laughs> this was always my weakness, though, was 
getting away, like, just get that, that jump, you know? No, there's no denying this is a really valuable effort. No matter what yeah. you're doing, no matter if you're racing crits, doing time trials, yeah. or doing Yeah, because any time trial with any kind of corners or hills, obviously you've got to accelerate out the corners. Well, how often would you, I mean, how early would you have started doing this kind of session before the crit season, would you reckon? To, to be honest, Emma, I'd put this session in throughout the whole year. Okay, right. Doesn't matter yeah. if you're winter or even if you're coming up to the summer. Right. It can really be beneficial yep. no matter where you are. So I guess if you don't normally do this kind of thing, you probably want to start doing it four to six weeks out from any relevant events. So if you are racing a crit, there's no point starting doing this the week before. It's probably a bit late. Give yourself time to adapt to it because the first time you do it, you feel a bit strange. It's quite a lot of the first time you do a new kind of training or a new exercise is about neuromuscular patterns. So it's about learning the right body movements and the right neuromuscular pathways, training your brain as well as your legs. And you'll get way more benefit out of the session second or third time. And uh, so you want to be doing it regularly if you are racing a crit. But to be honest, it's a pretty valuable session just for waking yourself up, burning a lot of calories in quite a short amount of time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you've got to remember the pros are out there day in, day out, and they've got the time yeah, to, to put in the four or five hour rides. But most of us only have a short amount of time in the week. Yeah, you've know, got to use work it time. well. So, yeah, so make sure yeah. you're really making the most of that time. Of course, high intensity intervals do not substitute for base training, but they're a very valuable training tool. So if you don't have much time to do lots of long endurance rides, can't cut them out totally, but sessions like this, really, uh, really good for your overall fitness, help recruit other energy systems. Right, 20 seconds, get in the right gear. Big ring. Can I count us in again? You may. You can count us out, because I don't have enough lung capacity to do it. I don't know how he does it. I guess you're using anaerobic systems. Take my mind off the effort. Right, three, two, one, and you're up. Coming up, 10 seconds to go. Ready, push it all out now. Five, four, three, two, one. Nice one. Good job. Man, oh, I definitely need to want a face off that one. Definitely getting a bit sweaty. And that's with a fan. Yeah, it is important to get a fan. Because well, you're... I don't have a fan at home. Do you not? Do you know what I do instead? I do my indoor sessions outside. I have a little balcony space, so I'm out of the rain and the snow. But I've done sessions where I have to wear knee warmers, arm warmers, down jacket sometimes when it's minus 20. But then I don't need a fan because it's blooming freezing anyway. To be honest, Emma, I always need a fan. Really? Even if it's cold? Not even a fan like that. Oh, you need a fan. Just oh. a proper fan. <laughs> well, I can be your greatest one, James. <laughs> oh, cheers. <Emma. laughs> Sorry, that was a pun that I totally missed. <laughs> My brain has gone anaerobic. <laughs> Chris is flying up this climb. He is flying. Passing left, to you left, right, and centre. Yeah. Nice and smooth. It's always good for us. We feel like we're going well up the climb. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wish I had his legs. Although I think it would look a bit funny on me, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, it could look a bit strange. Right, coming up to your final 30 second effort now. So you've got about half the recovery left. And uh, since it's the last one, make it count. You should make all of them count when there's only five. After this, it's just a spin down recovery. Don't yeah, think so about that yet. Use this like you're sprinting for a finish line. Yeah. Head down, driving the pedals down. Focusing on keeping your core strong. Stable, yep. Don't let your technique go out the window. I'm not sure I ever had any technique. 
Oh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll learn it by the fifth, <laughs> fifth one. You yeah, haven't got those rainbow bands on you for no reason. Yeah, but it wasn't for sprinting, <laughs> though, was it? <laughs> yeah. We're nearly there. Take a quick swig. For this effort. Whew. Right, half a minute to go. Think about your gear choice again. Don't want to stuff this one up. In the big ring. Deep breaths. You won't have much time to breathe during a 30 second sprint effort. If you have got a power meter, focus on that power. Yeah, about twice your FTP at least, depending on whether you're a sprinter or not. And of course, if you don't have a power meter, just 11 out of 10 in terms of effort. Ramp it up. Two, one, and you're off. Come on, 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Great effort. Ooh, nice. Definitely fell out. Out. Right. You got four, four and a half minutes now to warm down. You've got a 60 RPM on the screen. So you can either sit on that. You can go a bit higher. Well, it's only higher. 60 because poor old Chris having to ride uphill while doing a recovery. <laughs> So, you can go a bit of a higher cadence, it's probably good for spinning your legs out. Don't forget to have a drink, have as much as you like now, you won't be sick now. Definitely got some sweat going on. Sign of a good session. If it ain't raining, we ain't training, right? Exactly. It's raining indoors today. I think it's actually snowing outside. <laughs> of course, you can do the session in, indoors in the summer too, but uh, in fact, it is the kind of training session that if you live somewhere with a lot of traffic or where it's hard to get a clear run of a safe road, it's quite a good one to do indoors because it's so specific and it, the efforts are so short, you really have to get them right. So if you're outside and you have to stop at a junction or a red light, it'll kind of ruin the 30 second effort. So this is the kind of session that is really quite beneficial to do indoors, whether it's summer or winter. And, uh, and it's uh, obviously made a lot more exciting by getting to watch the, uh, the Paso Cello as you ride, rather than just a, a blank wall. Look at those beautiful blue skies. Oh, yeah. Dreamy. You're pretty lucky with the weather that day, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, it was boiling out there, that's good time, <laughs> yeah. Nice and easy, spin it down. Maybe think about a nice healthy meal you're going to have straight after your training session. Could have prepared something beforehand. But of course, the most important part of training is recovery. Exactly, so you can't get better unless you recover. Part of that is rest, part of that is diet. Something with a bit of, bit of carbohydrate, not too much protein. Just slows down the absorption of carbohydrate. But a bit of protein spaced out throughout the day. Not too much fat because slows down your carbohydrate absorption. This is the kind of thing that makes me really ache the next day, because I'm just not used to doing it. <laughs> yeah, you should see your heart rate start to come down now. Yeah. If it doesn't get right down to your, your starting heart rate, it's not a surprise, because you've done quite a big effort, so we're expecting it to be elevated for a while. And that's okay. It's one of the benefits, really. Do remember, though, if you did like this video, then to give it a thumbs up. And share it with your friends. Yeah. Your and friends who need to do sprint training sessions. Yeah, exactly. Less than a minute left, just spin it out. I feel the need for coffee. Does that count as a recovery drink, James, coffee? Huh? Yeah, say yes. Yeah. <laughs> Please. <laughs> for Italians out there. Yeah. I think coffee. And Australians. Yeah, and Australians. All they do is drink and flat any white <laughs> Thank you.
Right guys, if you did enjoy this video with Emma and I, then make sure you give it a good thumbs up. And to watch any more, some more training videos, then okay. click on Emma. Or on James. <laughs> nice work, mate. Ooh. Woo! Woo!